Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Enriquez. Like you said, my name is Henry Banks. I'll be representing the Ecomarathon drivetrain team today. My teammates are Rachel Frost and Peter Nielsen, and our faculty advisors are Dr. Robert Noggle and Dr. Robert Banks. So the Shell Eco Marathon is a competition where teams and universities from all over the Americas come together and design, manufacture, and ultimately compete to try and achieve superior fuel economy. That being the best miles per gallon you can get out of a petroleum powered vehicle. To aptly address the energy crisis as well as climate change, our vehicles in the future are going to be need to be more fuel efficient. And so this competition can help teach engineering students the principles through which internal combustion engines are made more efficient in regard to fuel consumption, as well as help inspire students to go out into industry someday and help make this difference. So if you saw the chassis team's presentation yesterday, you may already know this, but we elected to split up our Ecomarathon team into three sub-teams, those being chassis, data acquisition, and us, drivetrain. So in a competition based project like this, it's really tempting to just dive right in the work in the manufacturing. But given we have two years for this project, uh, we thought it would be pertinent to take a more data centered design approach so we can have a more informed decision making process when it came to our design decisions. So the first thing we set out to do was figure out exactly how much power our engine is going to need in order to get around the track at Sonoma. And to do that, we developed a Roland model. This model was a program in MATLAB that interpreted a variety of parameters from gradient of the track at Sonoma to weight of the car, speed of the car, drag, and several other factors. And it tells us the power output as you go along the track. So with this information, knowing exactly how much power our engine needed to make, we can now start engine benchmarking to figure out which engine we're going to be using in our car. We benchmarked hundreds of engines from utility engines from lawn equipment to engines from remote controlled planes and cars to small stationary engines. And ultimately we landed on the engine you can see here on the right, which is a 30 cc Ryobi engine out of a weed whacker. Uh, we picked this engine because through our road load model, we determined that around 30 cc's was going to be what we needed to make the power that was needed to move our car around the track. And on top of it, unlike any other engine we benchmarked, this engine has a belt driven overhead camshaft, which no other engine had, like I said, and this presents a really unique opportunity to enhance the air efficiency, the, volume, the volumetric efficiency of our engine. So now that we had our engine, we had to fabricate a fuel as well as an intake system to meet shell regulations. The fuel system you can see here on our right consists of a pressure tank originally from a hot tub that goes through a series of valves and ultimately through air pressure drives gas into the engine. And on the left, you can see the two main components of our air intake system. Uh, on the top is a throttle body, which we had off the shelf. The problem with it was that it was far too large for the little tiny 30 cc engine we had. So accordingly, we designed and 3D printed a insert out of nylon and carbon fiber that made this throttle body act as if it were much smaller allowing the engine to get an appropriate amount of air. A lot of our electrical system came from a Ecotron kit that we bought, which consisted of a engine wiring harness as well as an engine computer. But on top of this, we had to fabricate a good bit of our own electrical system to integrate the wiring harness with our car and the auxiliary safety systems, as well as the cabin controls for the driver. So once we had our fuel system, our intake system, and electric system sorted out, we could actually begin the tuning process. Like I said, we bought a fuel injection kit from Ecotron that allowed us to control the fuel consumption of the engine. And this is an incredibly powerful tool that gives us huge power over both the performance as well as fuel consumption of our engine. Simultaneously with our tuning process, we developed a gearbox because we needed some way to get power from our engine to the rear wheel so we could actually power the car. With the help of the machine shop, we designed the gearbox that you can see integrated in the back of the car, which consists of a pretty significant gear reduction as well as a clutch system so that you can engage and disengage the engine from the rest of the drivetrain. The neat point about this gearbox is the clutch we used, whereas every other team is using a centrifugal clutch, 
which is the clutch these engines are designed to use, we are using a clutch back um, for two main reasons. One being that the centripetal clutches in the past had had problems with burning out and failing. And on top of it, this clutch back is controlled by the driver. So we can engage the drivetrain at any engine speed as opposed to the fixed point that a centripetal clutch engages at. So at the end of this project, we produced a functioning drivetrain. We've integrated that drivetrain into the chassis and vehicle, and the vehicle is currently ready for in-vehicle tuning and testing. Um, while this year's competition has been canceled, uh, subsequent shell teams are now in a very good spot to immediately hit the ground running and start fine-tuning the vehicle and get really involved into the testing. So while we won't be going to Sonoma this year, we look forward to and are excited to see our vehicle excel in subsequent years. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions.